Hey, Ruan here from Tunnel Vision TV, and in today's video, I am super excited to announce my new Blender book, taking Blender to the next level. That's coming out at the end of May. Super excited about that. So I want to take some time to just tell you guys about the book and what you can expect from the book. And then we're also going to do a tutorial from the book. So we're going to take one of the chapters, chapter 12, and I'm going to do a little tutorial on that to show you guys what you can expect from the book. So here you can see um, I'm on the Amazon site where it's going to be available. Uh, it's going to be out end of May, end of this month. And uh, yeah, it's called Taking Blender to the Next Level. And let's quickly look at some of the chapters. So chapter one is going to be about geometry nodes and creating some dynamic scenes. Um, chapter two is also kind of around motion graphics and using a little bit of geometry nodes. Chapter three, we're going to dive into organic modeling. There's going to be a part one and two, chapter three and four. Chapter five is going to be about uh, materials, like how to apply textures and materials uh, using the node system in Blender. And then chapter six is going to be about 3D scanning and photogrammetry. So that's basically just taking a normal camera like a DSLR or even your iPhone, take some photos of an object and how to convert that into a 3D object. And then I'm also um, explaining in that chapter how to clean it up using Blender. And then chapter seven, we're going to create our own cotton cartoon character from scratch so we're going to create like an alien cartoon character but you can obviously create your own uh, character it depends what you want and then chapter eight we're going to go into animating and rigging and all those good things um, and then chapter nine we're going to start with some physics so some rigid body simulation physics destroying a, a statue or a building and then chapter 10 we're going to dive into uh, cloth simulations like how to use cloth simulations to create clothing for your characters and all kinds of things that you can do with cloth and then chapter 11 we're going to look at hair particles and how to create some interesting hair for your characters and then uh, chapter 12 that's the one that we're going to look at today um, just like a quick little tutorial on how to how to do that so that's all going to be about camera tracking inside of blender so match moving or camera tracking whatever you want to call it and then chapter 13 is going to be about compositing. So we're going to take our live action footage and then composite a, our character into that scene with a walk cycle that we did in one of the previous chapters. And then chapter 14 will be all about the final render process, like how to actually get your render into an image sequence and then how to convert that image sequence into a video file like MP, MP4. So yeah, I'm super excited about the book that's coming out end of May. There's a link down in the description where you can check it out. There's also a 25% discount code that you can use if you look down in the description. Um, yeah, just click on that link and you can actually pre-order the book now and you can get that 25% discount. So make use of that if you want to. So without carrying on too long, let's jump into Blender and let's look at one of the chapters from the book, chapter 12, camera tracking. So let's get started. All right, so before we begin, you can actually download the image sequence that I'm going to be using in this tutorial. Link is down in the description. It's an image sequence of, I think it's 125 frames in duration. So you can download that and you can follow along. You can obviously use your own footage as well. Um, all depends on what you want. So yeah, let's get started. So I'm um, creating a new scene just go file new and then I'm going to go to this little plus here at the end and I'm going to go to VFX and then motion tracking and this is basically the workspace where we're going to be doing the camera tracking so first we need to import that image sequence that we are going to use so download the link in the description and then we're going to import this so I'm going to click on open and then I'm just going to browse to that folder where I saved the image sequence and here you can see it starts at frame one and it ends at frame 125. So we want to select all of these images in this image sequence. Just press A to select all of them and then click open clip to import that image sequence. So I can just zoom out here slightly, same controls as anywhere else in Blender. And uh, yeah, this is basically our scene and I can just zoom out here at the bottom and um, First of all, what we can do is we can click set scene frames here on the left hand side and that will actually just set the timeline here at the bottom to match the, the frame, the amount of frames in your image sequence. So you can see it's currently set to 
125, which is nice. And then you can also click this prefetch button here on the side, and that will basically load all the image um, files into memory so you can play it back a lot quicker so you can see here uh, this tire or this little bar here is actually moving and at the bottom it's saying prefetching and that's kind of loading all those frames into memory so let's just give that a second to complete all right so now we can press space to play back our image sequence and as you can see we've got this scene just a very basic handheld um, shot that i took with my my camera so nothing crazy but it's actually a very nice test to do a camera track all right next let's take a look at some of the settings like the camera settings etc so here on the right hand side you've got a menu with some tabs footage track stabilization etc so we're going to go to the track tab and under objects you'll see that we are going to track the camera so you can add like objects if you want to do object tracking but this tutorial is going to focus on camera tracking only so you can go down to the camera settings and this is where you can set your sensor width and your uh, pixel aspect so this is for your actual camera settings the camera that you used to film the um the, the live action footage so you can also use this little drop down here and they've got some presets here for different cameras like the alexas and the um, black magic and full frame dslrs red etc so you basically just want to make sure that your sensor width is correct here and then if we expand lens this is where you can input the settings for the lens that was actually used when you filmed that shot so sometimes this information won't be available if you get the footage from someone else so you kind of try and kind of guess what they what what lens they used but in this shot i used something very similar to a 24 millimeter lens so i'm going to make sure that my focal length is set to 24 millimeter so now we can go over to our track settings here on the left hand side of the viewport so i'm just going to move this up slightly so we have a little bit more space to see what's going on here so what we're going to do here there's only one setting that i really want to change and that is the match setting under the tracking settings so by default the match setting is set to keyframe and that basically means it's going to try and match the track or the tracking area it's going to match it to the first keyframe where you're starting the track but i want to change that i want to change this to previous frame so that means it's going to try and match the um the tracking area to the previous frame so i find that works a lot better than keyframe you can obviously experiment and see which one works better for you but yeah i like to set it on previous frame and that usually works pretty well then your pattern size and your search size so the pattern size is the um, basically the area on the footage that it's going to track and the search size is the area around that 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 tracking area so basically if you have footage that where the camera is moving really fast and there's a lot of motion in the scene you can increase this search size if the tracker is having issues like trying to stick onto a specific area in the shot so that's just the the search size around the search area so i usually leave this on default 20 uh, 21 for the pattern size and then 71 for the search size so that's perfectly fine as i say if you have problems with fast moving camera motion then you can increase the search size but that should be fine okay so now we can start the tracking process and i usually aim for around 10 to 20 good trackers in the scene now, if you don't have enough trackers in the scene, you will get an error message when you're trying to solve your track. So I usually try and aim for about yeah, anywhere between 10 and 15, but you need to make sure that those are good trackers and that they overlap the whole shot. So you can have trackers that's only like a few frames in duration, but for a good track, you need at least say 10 to 15 trackers that overlap at any given moment so let's see how we can do that so i'm going to make sure i'm on frame one so you can use the shortcut shift and the left arrow on the keyboard to jump to the first frame and then i'm just going to zoom in here and i'm going to start and just look around and find something for our first track so we are looking at high contrast areas in the scene i also like to add a lot of trackers on the floor area because that is 
basically the main area that we want to use in the shot to to get the floor correct um, if you are obviously replacing something on the side wall and you need to do something here then you'll have more trackers on that area to make sure that that area is tracked uh, perfectly but i usually find if you track the floor really well then you can kind of build the scene from the floor and match it with the rest of the buildings etc so i'm just going to zoom in here i'm going to try and find the first um, area to track and i'm going to focus on this little rock that's here on the floor so i'm going to hold in control and then just click there to create that tracker and you can look here in the top corner you can set this onto the track or you can just click this track tab to get a little preview there a little zoomed in preview that's very handy and uh, yeah now we can go and we can track forward so before we start tracking you can also change the motion model here on the side um, you have like different options location and rotation and scale etc perspective but most of the time the location one works pretty well if you have any errors or issues like sticking onto a tracking point you can try and experiment with some of these other motion models um, but as i say location usually works pretty well you can try and use location rotation and scale and that will kind of um, if the, the the area is kind of rotating or scaling a lot then that's a good option but for this tutorial we're just going to use location so with our first tracker created, I'm going to track this now forward. And to do that, you can use these little icons here or these little buttons here below the, um, the, the, the preview window. But I'm going to use the shortcut keys and to track forward, you just press Control T on the keyboard. And as you can see, we've got some interesting looking graphs here at the bottom. This is just the like the, the the motion that the tracker is moving in the scene and if i scrub the timeline you can see that our tracker is kind of jumping around and trying to stick to the little uh, little rock and if you look at this little window here on the side under the track uh, window i can scrub through and you can see that our tracker is sticking really really well to that rock if it wasn't sticking this would have uh, jumped around in this in that little frame so you can see it, it looks perfect so we have one tracker now you can also see here in the top corner this is the dope sheet we can zoom in here a bit and here we can see our first tracker and it's going all the way through to frame 125 so we have one good tracker so i'm going to zoom out and let's find our second tracker so what you can also do is you don't have to start at frame one. We can also start at the middle and then track forward and then track backwards. So let me show you guys how to do that. So I'm going to go to around frame 60 and I want to track this thing here on the on the floor. I'm not sure what it is, but it's like a metal piece that's lying there or something. I'm going to place my tracker over this area. So control and click there to place the tracker. We get the little preview and now I'm going to track forward so i'm going to press ctrl t and it's going to track forward and let's just scrub through this area keep an eye on this uh, little window in the top area so you can see that's sticking pretty nicely and you can also see that it's sticking in the scene so now i want to go to that first frame so that is frame 60 where we started this track now i want to track backwards from frame 60 to frame 1 so to do that we simply go to that frame make sure you have your tracker selected and if you want to select the tracker just kind of click next to it you don't have to click on it um, and then press Control shift and t and that will track backwards you can also use this little uh, button here that says uh, track markers um, so you can do like one frame at a time or you can do everything from there backwards and now you can see we have a nice track from frame one all the way through to frame 125 and now if i scrub here if you keep an eye on this little window here on this on the right hand side you can see that our tracker is sticking to that object pretty well and here in the dope sheet at the top you can see we have two trackers now and you can also see that there's a key frame on the second track on frame 60 and that's because we started the track in the in the middle on frame 60 and we tracked forwards and backwards so i hope that makes sense uh but yeah that's that's a good tracker so let's go ahead and just save our project now to make sure that we don't lose anything 
All right, so let's find a, another area to track. So I'm going to zoom in here in the middle of the floor. And you can see there's a nice crack here that we can use. That's nice and contrasty. So I'm going to make sure I'm on frame one and uh, just press hold control and click to place the tracker and then control T to track forward. And then let's scrub through here, keeping an eye on this little zoom in preview there. And it's looking pretty good. So let's go back to frame one, shift and uh, left arrow, and let's find another feature that we can track. So maybe let's track this corner of this line. So I'm gonna place the tracker right here, control T, track forward, and let's scrub through, keeping an eye on this little window. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so what you can also do is you can track something that goes off screen. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say there's a feature on the on the shot and you track it and like halfway through the shot, it goes out of frame. Obviously, your track's going to kind of freak out there. It's going to struggle to, to keep track. Um, but let me show you how to do that. So let's say if I scrub through here, you can see there's a rock or something here in the corner, this little rock, and it's going to go out of frame right there. So it kind of goes out and uh, goes back into frame. So that's going to give us some issues. So let's see how we can track that. So I'm going to go to the first frame, place my tracker here, control and click. And I'm going to do a normal track, control T and see what happens. Now you can see it stops here, uh, or it stopped at frame 81. Now I'm going to just go backwards a bit and see if everything before that is looking good. So that one where it gets close to the edge is pretty good. I'm looking at this uh, little preview window there and that's looking all good. And you can see there at the end, it kind of shifted off the rock. If you look at this zoomed in, I'm just going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard and you can see that track is not really good because it shifted, but this last track or the track, bef the, the, the frame before that is, is really good. So I'm going to go to the last good frame and now we want to tell blender to delete everything after that frame for this tracker so to do that you basically just use this little button that says clear track path now you have one going forward and you also have one that's going back so you can do the same thing if it's the other way around if that makes sense but for this we want to delete everything going forward so i'm just going to click on this one and you'll see that's now going to be the last frame for that specific track um, so if i go further you'll see there's no no more like tracking lines so that's the last frame so you can also see uh, if we look at the dope sheet you can see that we have one two three four five trackers and the last tracker only goes to that frame frame 79 so yeah let's carry on and create more good trackers so i'm going to go back to frame one and let's zoom in here and maybe let's create one year further back you also want to always try and have trackers that's closer to the camera and trackers that's also further away from the camera that will just give a better i find a better result in the end because you give that perspective data um, and then it's just a lot easier for blender to kind of figure out how the scene looks so i'm going to go in here and you'll see this little this is like a telephone pole or something i'm going to zoom in here and at the base i'm going to place a tracker right there okay and we're going to track forward Control t and that's looking pretty good let's scrub through this keeping an eye on the little window here at the top it's looking good all right let's create another one maybe let's do this corner of this this wall and remember i'm placing trackers on the floor uh, for now we're going to add some other trackers later on but let's get a few good ones that's on the floor and that's going to give us some good results so on frame one i'm going to track this corner here Control t and let's just scrub through this to make sure that it let's see there's a bit of a problem there it actually you can see there jumped to the back of the car you can see there and then it kind of stayed there and then it jumped actually it jumped back so i'm going to go back to the first frame and i'm going to delete this uh this tracker completely so with this tracker selected just press x delete the tracker and i think we can probably fix it by uh increasing the pattern size but uh yeah let's give it a try so i'm going to place my tracker there again and i'm just going to simply drag these points to 
create a bigger pattern and hopefully now because we're including the back of the car it's going to realize okay these are two different um, features so let's see if that's going to work Control t and let's quickly scrub through this i'm keeping an eye on this little window and there you can see it's looking a lot better it's not jumping to the car anymore because we increased the the pattern size for that one tracker so good stuff all right so let's save and let's carry on so currently we have seven trackers so we can add a few more so let's look around this area maybe this pipe that's going into the ground here so on frame one let's create a tracker right here and let's do control t track forward and let's scrub through and keeping an eye on this little preview window here all right that's looking pretty good okay let's go back to frame one and let's place one on this corner of this shadow here that's also on the floor so control click control t and let's scrub so that's kind of the process you're just adding trackers scrubbing through making sure they're good and you can also if you look at this graph here at the bottom you can also kind of see that most of the trackers are actually following the same motion okay so sometimes you'll see something that jumps out a bit and you can actually click on those lines and that will select that tracker so you can see this is this tracker here on the on the side that's doing some something that's slightly different but i'm not going to worry about that too much right now because i will explain how we can clean our tracks in the end once we've done the solve so let's carry on and create more trackers so on frame one i'm going to just zoom in here a bit and maybe let's place one here on this edge or this corner of the shadow as well so control uh, click and then control t and let's scrub and see if we have a good track yeah that's not bad let's go back to frame one and let's maybe add another one here somewhere on the floor in front of us so maybe this little rock here is a good feature to try i just want to see oh it actually goes out of frame so we can use it but let's try and find something that stays in the in the shot so maybe this corner of this little little thing here so i'm gonna track that corner Control t and let's have a look scrubbing through keeping an eye on the little window yeah that's looking good let's maybe find one more now always remember not to track anything that's moving in the scene and that includes trees or shadows of the trees so you can see we've got some nice tree shadows here in the road but the problem is if there's a little bit of wind they might actually move without you realizing it so always try and keep uh, just yeah just stay away from any objects that might actually be moving so now we can maybe try and track some of the things in the background like this little stop sign so i'm gonna go to frame one and control click on the stop sign and then control t to track forward so you don't only have to track things on the floor you can track things anywhere in the scene but as i mentioned it's always good to have a few good trackers on the floor so we know that we can solve that floor all right so we've got the stop sign and if i scrub through here you can see that it's actually keeping track on that stop sign pretty nicely let's create one more maybe this bright yellow sign here at the back maybe that's a good feature to track so on frame one i'm going to control click this corner and then control t all right so let's scrub through keeping an eye on the little window in the corner that's looking good how many trackers do we have we have a total of 13 so it's 12 plus the, the first one so 13 is not bad maybe let's add a few more maybe this nice door here in the background so i'm gonna just click on that corner control t and scrub through to make sure that it's sticking it's looking good uh what else can we do maybe one of these windows here in the back maybe this one so control click there and control t to track forward okay so we can see something happened there i think that one yeah you can see if you look at this little window it actually jumped to the middle of that window for some weird reason so i'm just going to select this tracker delete it by pressing x 
and let's try that again so i'm going to track this corner and this time i'm going to just increase this tracker's size a bit like maybe like so and then control t okay now that didn't work at all so i'm going to go back and let's delete this one and maybe let's put the tracker on this corner of this bigger door so i'm going to just try that control t and yeah that's looking good so sometimes you just have to kind of just try a few things and see what feature works better but you can see this one is tracked pretty well all right so now we have a total of 15 trackers which is good so 15 and then one that doesn't go all the way through so let's say we've got 14 trackers that's all the way through the scene so maybe let's add one more now always remember the quality of your trackers are the most important thing it doesn't help if you have like 50 average or bad trackers it's always better to have fewer but better or yeah better trackers so just try and get the the best tracks that you can so maybe let's do a track on this wall so you'll see there's like a light switch or something here so i'm going to track that Control t and that is sticking nicely let's have a look scrubbing through yeah that's looking good and maybe let's do this sign here on the wall as well just got some nice high contrast so frame one let's track that corner Control t and that's looking good let's do a scrub okay so i think we have enough trackers so we have a total of 17 so 16 plus the top one and um yeah most of them are running all the way through except the the one tracker that we started in the middle so yeah that's looking really good so the next step will be to solve our track so to do that we're going to go to this solve tab here on the left hand side and without changing any settings we're going to first do a solve and see what the error margin is or the this the tracking score basically so and then we can uh, refine and adjust and, and get a better result so all you have to do is go to the solve tab and then simply click on solve camera motion so after you've clicked solve camera motion it's going to give you the solve error here at the top in the corner of the view area so you can currently see we've got a solve error of 2.6 pixels now you want to try and get that number as low as possible the bigger that number the more um, things will kind of shift and move around in the scene it's not going to stick exactly to that position um, so you want to get this this number as low as possible preferably below one pixel because anything bigger than a pixel you might actually be able to see that but anything lower than one pixel um, solve error will you won't really realize that so anything lower than one is good so we want to try and get that number lower and an easy way to do that is to use these keyframe a and b so i am going to increase this number to about 20 and what you want to do here is you want to find a area in your shot where there's a lot of perspective motion okay and that's just going to give blender some extra frames to kind of um, try and figure out how the scene is orientated and all of those things so i'm going to use keyframe a 20 frame 20 and keyframe b frame 100 so that gives us quite a, a bit to work with so simply click on solve camera motion again and now you can see that our solve error is 0 0.5 which is half a pixel which is amazing so that's great so we don't have to worry about bringing that down even further even though we can probably still bring it down closer to zero what you can also do is you can clean some tracks so there's a nice little tool here on the left hand side under cleanup so if we just expand that and what i like to do is just make sure you don't select anything in the scene by just clicking somewhere so nothing is selected and then what i usually do is i just click on clean tracks and then click on this little um this little pop-up window here in the corner of the viewport so now what you can do is you can increase the projection or the reprojection error slowly so hold in shift and slowly increase this and now you will see it's suddenly going to select all the trackers in the scene and if i move this number if i increase this number slowly you will see it's going to start deselecting 
some of the trackers. Now we are basically filtering using the solve error, but on each tracker. So if I increase this number even further, you'll see that less and less trackers will be selected and it's only going to leave me with the worst or the, yeah, the worst trackers. So if we go all the way up, it's going to go, it's going to deselect everything because there's no tracker with a error that's bigger than 1.117. So if I bring this down slightly, you'll see it's going to select that one tracker there because that one tracker has got an error that's bigger than one. Uh, you can also check it here in the dope sheet. So these little numbers next to each tracker, okay, that is that specific tracker's error number or error value. And you can see here right at the bottom, track number 16 has got an error value of 1.0779, which means that is probably track number 16. So if I increase this, decrease this, you'll see it kind of, activates there at around 1. Point, yeah 1.07 so this is just an easy way to select like bad tracks or all the bad tracks in the scene by just using the slider and then once you have maybe one or two of the worst trackers selected we can simply delete them so i'm just going to delete that one so i'm going to just filter to that one press x delete and now we're simply going to click on solve camera motion again and now you can see our solve error is 0.45 because we deleted one tracker from our scene. So you can see we only have a total of 16 trackers now and we don't have anything that's has got a very high uh, error number. All right, so that is very, very good. So the next step is to set up our tracking scene. So I'm just going to bring this down slightly so we can see this little preview window here in the top corner. So to do that, just scroll down here on the left-hand side and click on Setup Tracking Scene. Now, if I click this, you'll see here in the top corner, it's going to create like a plane and um, it's going to import the footage in the background. So yeah, just to kind of have your tracking scene there. So if you hover with your mouse over this little 3D viewport here in the top and press space, you can see that it's kind of moving, but it's not orientating. You can see that the floor is not aligned to our scene and it just looks very strange you can also let's just go full screen here and you can see this a bit better so you can see it's not aligned to our scene so we need to align our floor or our tracking scene to the footage so that's actually really easy to do so first what we're going to do is make sure you are on frame number one and then here on the left hand side you'll see there's a orientation section with floor wall set origin and then set the axes and also the the scale so we're going to start with the floor now to specify which trackers are on the floor you need to select three trackers and it will use those trackers to orient the floor in our scene so i'm going to select this tracker here so just a little tip here don't click on the tracker because you can actually move them around so i'm just going to click next to the tracker and uh, another thing that you can do is you can actually lock all the trackers so let's do that so press a to select all the tracks and then simply right click and we are going to select lock tracks so now you can't accidentally move them which is a good thing to do once you're happy with your tracks so i'm going to select this one here just kind of clicking next to it holding in shift and I'm going to select this one and then maybe one of these as well. So I've got three trackers selected and now I can simply click on floor here on the side and if you look at the 3D viewport you can see that it looks like the floor is a little bit better aligned. It's not perfect but it's kind of a good starting point. Uh, next what we want to do is we want to set the origin of our scene. So the middle point that will be at the center of our blender scene basically so i'm going to select one of these maybe this tracker and i'm simply going to click on set origin now if you keep an eye on this top viewport you'll see what's going to happen so i'm going to click set origin and you'll see that it kind of snaps to that center of the the world okay next we want to set our x and y axes now you only really have to do one of these and then we can adjust it a little bit later so the only thing you need to do is select a tracker that's either on the x axis from the world origin so this was the origin tracker that we selected so if we do x it will be something 
either this tracker or, or a tracker on this side, which we don't have, or we can do select a tracker that's on the, the Y axis kind of going further in. So I'm going to select this tracker because it's kind of aligned with our origin tracker and it's on the Y axis. And with that tracker selected, I'm simply going to click on set Y axis. Now keep an eye on this top, uh, top window and you'll see it kind of aligns our scene to the Y axis. Next, we can set our scene scale. So this is always very important if you're working with uh, any real world scenario. So here under orientation on the left hand side, you'll see that there's a set scale, apply scale and distance. So basically what we need to do is we need to select two trackers in the scene. So I'm going to say select this one and maybe this one. And then I'm going to guess the distance in meters between these two. So let's say this is about three meters. So I'm going to input the distance here to three. And it's just between those two. And then I'm going to click on set scale. Now you can see in the preview, it kind of scaled our floor a little bit bigger and the cube is also a little bit bigger. And now, yeah, that's just a way to tell Blender like that is the scene scale. You obviously don't have to be perfect, but it just gives you a little bit of a better result. And if you're working with uh, real world models, everything will just work a little bit better. Okay, so with all of that done, all the orientation is done and uh, yeah, our tracking scene is set up. Now we can go back to our layout workspace here at the top. So I'm just going to click that and you can see there's nothing in the scene here, but we have a camera. There's our camera. And if I scrub through the scene, you'll see that we have some movement. And if I play that back, you'll see now that is the actual movement that I moved or that I walked with the camera when I was filming uh, that shot, which is just pretty amazing. So what you can do now is we can look through that camera to see the scene. So I'm going to click on this little camera icon and I can see that's our scene. And if I press space to play this back, you will see that it looks like things are kind of sticking to the scene. So it's obviously playing a little bit slow because it's caching some of those frames, but you can get an idea if you play through this. So first of all, I'm going to delete this cube because we don't really need that now. And I'm also going to delete this lamp or this light, just delete that from the scene. And uh, next, I want to align our world just a little bit better, just to make it a little bit more solid. So to do that, click on this drop down here at the top and then click on motion tracking. And that's going to show our trackers, as you can see here in the scene, you can see all of the trackers that we tracked. So here at the back, we have a few, uh, those are probably those signs and things in the background of our scene. And then you have these trackers that we probably tracked on the floor. And that one was probably that light switch that was on the side side wall. So if you have enough trackers, you can kind of visualize your your 3D scene with just looking at the trackers. So now what I want to do is I want to look at this from the top. So I'm just going to click on the little Z there. And um, what you can do is you can click on your camera and you can actually just rotate around and you can see it's going to rotate all the trackers as well. And then you can try and align it to your or to the to the grid. So from the top, it actually looks pretty good because you can see this wall or these uh, trackers are going up in a kind of straight line. Uh, but if we go maybe to the side, like from this angle, you can also see that's looking pretty good. So these trackers are all on the floor. So if this was like something like that, then you can see this is not right because it's not lined up to the floor. And if we look through the camera, you can see things are not, not looking great. So this is just an easy way to align everything. So I can click on the camera and then just rotate this to make sure these trackers are on the floor. And we can also look at this from behind. Sometimes it's a bit skewed like this. So just an easy way to kind of just readjust it and make sure that your trackers are on the floor, the ones that you track. This is also very important why I said that you need to have quite a few trackers on the floor because it makes it easier to align it here as well. Okay, once we're happy with that, we can look through the camera again. And I'm going to just scale this plane down because it's pretty big. 
like so. Let's just zoom in here so we can see things a bit better. And now you can see that the plane is lining up pretty well. So I can press, I can click on the on the plane uh, GX to move it in the in the X axis, and you can see it's lining up pretty well with the wall. So I can go GY, and you can see it's lining up with that wall pretty well. So I'm just going to move this back to kind of the center, and you can scale this and play around with this. And uh, let's do a quick playback and see what's happening. All right, so as you can see, it's sticking pretty nicely to our floor. So I can just scrub through here and you can see that it's looking good. What you can also do is you can add some test objects. So I can maybe add a cube. Uh, let's just scale that down. And I'm going to enable face snapping here at the top. So I'm just going to click the snapping drop down menu, select face. And I'm going to press on the, or oh, with the cube selected, press GZ and then just hold in control and point to this plane. Now this is sitting exactly on that, on that plane, basically. So now we can go ahead and we can duplicate this. So shift D and then I only want to move it on the X and uh, Y. So press shift Z to move it around on the X and Y axes. So you can maybe place one here and we can maybe just hide the plane for now. And let's duplicate this one. So shift D and then shift Z to keep it on the plane. Maybe let's place one here at the back like so. And uh, yeah, let's have a look if we play through this. So if I scrub through this, you can see that those cubes are sticking very, very nicely to our scene. And uh, yeah, this is basically a good track. All right, and that's how easy it is to do camera tracking inside of Blender. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Keep an eye out for my book coming out end of this month, taking Blender to the next level. And remember to use that 25% discount code down in the description. If you want to make use of that, grab it now. You can pre-order all of those good things. All the details below. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good week and see you guys next time. Cheers, bye.